changing things up yet again. We're talking today about pens. Yes, ballpoint pens, but not this cheap Bic pen, no. We're talking about this right here, the Hinderer Investigator pen made of solid brass and steel, a true tactical pen that might be worth buying. Stick around. After almost 10 years reviewing guns and outdoor gear on YouTube, I've developed a pretty good nose for deals, and now I'm sharing what I find with you. Every day on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash the late boy scout, you'll find awesome new deals on guns and outdoor gear. That's also a great place to reach me for questions and to start discussions with other gun and gear enthusiasts. My Facebook followers are also the first to know when I post my own used gear for sale. So if you like good gear for a great price, follow me on Facebook today. Shane, you're not actually saying that this little piece of brass and steel is a genuine weapon, are you? Like, you expect me to take that little thing seriously? Get a real Kubaton, dude. Don't carry around tactical pens and expect them to do that kind of job. Yeah, I understand, I understand. And no, I am not saying that this is a weapon you ought to rely on. I do feel, however, that a very solid piece of metal like this, you know, just about palm length, maybe a little longer, that also serves the, the job of being a genuine pen, a ballpoint pen with a Fisher Space Pen refill in it. Something like this is very handy to have and maybe worth spending the money on to have just a really super durable hunk of metal that can do a number of different tasks, including potentially fend off somebody that wants to hurt you or bash and break some other piece of something or other. So yeah, I do think that tactical pens, generally speaking, are worth getting into. Um, I don't know that I would collect them as much as I do knives, but they certainly are collectible. This one in particular is very collectible, the Hinderer Investigator Pen. So let's get into that just a little bit, talk about uh, what this guy is, how much it costs, some of the variants, and so forth. So as I said before, the, uh, the Rick Hinderer designed and manufactured by Hinderer Knives investigator pen here. This one in solid brass, and you can see that there are some grooves going down this side of it, and then these nice sharp cutouts right here and there. Uh, and then we have that sort of bullet tip on it, and that is a kind of a sharp scoring point. We could definitely scratch and score things with that. Um, and then obviously just a brass cap, screws on, screws off, and a very minimal skinny little pocket clip. We're gonna talk in a minute why this I think is the worst feature on this pen. So it is very collectible as I said before. This one when I bought it was somewhere around 55 bucks. I think it's about 60 now for the solid brass. Uh, there is an aluminum one that's just below this in cost. That one costs about, I think it's 55 now for the aluminum and you can get that in several different colors all anodized. Um, that one is very interesting to note. It's obviously very much lighter than this solid brass because it's aluminum. Let's weigh it while we have uh, while we're on that subject, on the Amazon basic scale, the brass investigator pen, pen weighs 1.4 ounces. The aluminum version, I believe, is in the 0.7 ounce range. I don't have that version here to show you. Blade HQ carries them. I'll roll in a little clip of that. Uh, but again, lots of cool variants. So they also have, I think, solid steel. Do they have titanium? Maybe. I think they do, actually. Whether Blade HQ carries them or not, I'm not sure about but I believe you can get them on the Hinderer website in a whole bunch of variations. So um, very collectible if you're into that. Uh, but as far as just straight up utility, what is a tactical pen good for? Well, let's get into that in a minute, but first let's compare it to just a couple other tactical pens that I have. This is the Maxpedition, I believe it's called the Acantha. And I've had this one for several years. Um, really like it a lot, actually. I believe it's got an aluminum body with a steel tip on it. And then that is O-ring sealed there as well as up here. I don't believe we do have O-ring seals on the, uh, on the Hinderer, so that's worth noting. But it still does have the Fisher Space Pen in it and a nice screw-on cap, very simple. As far as the lines, as far as the look of it, I really like this simple black. It's great. I actually really love the size too. You can see that, speaking from Kubaton sort of um, uh, purposes, you can see that there's a good amount of that sticking out of my, my, uh, my grip. Whereas with the Hinderer, it is quite minimal. It almost completely disappears if I'm holding it in the same position. Actually, it does really disappear. Whereas the Maxpedition, 
does po poke out just enough to do the damage that you want to do. Uh, so I like that about the Max Edition quite a bit. And that might be, for that reason, sort of my favorite form factor in uh, tactical pens. Um, and here's another one. This is definitely on the other end of the spectrum. This one from Klee Zion or K uh, KZ, uh, also known as Botash Tactical. Um, this has a big ring up there that you can stick some, some kind of a, a draw cord through and uh, clip, uh, th throw that on there and then yank it out of your pocket. And look at that stabby point that it's got. Love that, <laughs> dude. That is so cool. It is far more threatening looking, however, than either of these two. So you have to sort of draw that balance. Like, what do you want it to do and how, how easy do you want it to be to sort of carry around and you know, pass as a pen? You know what I mean? Because if you're going to consider this to be a potential defensive tool, okay, cool. But if you want it to be a incognito defensive tool, then it needs to pass as a simple pen. And I'm not so sure that the KZ one does that. It just looks like kind of a stabby little, I don't know, nail. And I think actually one of their tools is just called a nail where it's not actually a pen at all. So that one, again, very effective in that role as a potential Cubaton, but less so as a, a pen that just straight up passes. I think that this one really kind of nails that balance. Um, and so, and also it's perfect for the way I prefer to carry. Let's talk about that real quick. So the way I choose to carry my pen, I like to put it in my side pocket. So my, my pants pocket, I put it right up against the, uh, the bottom corner there, slide it in, slide it out and it does not interfere with the stuff that I carry in that pocket. So I can wear it there all day, have that pen at the ready, it's easy to yank out and use as I need to, but it also does not get in the way in the slightest. So that's the way I really prefer to carry my tactical pen. The hinderer, one of the big issues that I have with it, is that skinny little pocket clip I talked about before. It bends too easily, and over time that just becomes a big annoyance. This is a problem for me in the way that I choose to carry it. However, if you decided to choose or decided to wear this pen instead um, in your, let's say, shirt pocket, this would not be an issue at all. In fact, that would very much lend itself uh, to that type of carry because it really kind of resembles, you know, it's actually quite a bit thinner, but kind of resembles an actual pen. And if you were to sort of set this next to any other very nice looking pen, it would fit right in. It would pass like I said, as a normal pen and not as a potential defensive tool. Uh, and that is one thing I really do like about it. However, if I was to use this in my shirt pocket, I wouldn't want the brass version. I would prefer to have the aluminum version, make that as lightweight as it could be. That would just make more sense to me. The solid brass at, uh, what was it, 1.4 ounces? I'd feel like that's a little heavy in my front pocket. But again, in the pants pocket, no problem at all. So real quickly, going back to the idea of a tactical pen for defense. Now, I am no expert in this, not a martial artist, um, not trained in how to use a Cubaton. On the other hand, what do you do? You hold it really tight in your hand and then you just kind of hammer blow something that you want to hurt. That's about it. So uh, I, I don't think that you need special training to sort of understand that very basic principle and, and use a, a tactical pen effectively. Certainly you'll be more effective the more training you have, but anybody could pick this up and gra grab it really tightly and probably do some damage to someone or something if they had to. So yes, I like the idea of a nice tough pen, something that I'm gonna carry every day anyway as a writing utensil, as a way to communicate with people, as a way to take notes um, in my situation, whatever's going on, definitely something that I like to be able to do. If I'm gonna carry that anyway, then why not have something tough uh, really stout that can actually do some potential damage or give me a hand in any any number of other ways. I also want to mention that because this is a straight up pen and it genuinely passes as one, I can take this thing anywhere. So I can take it into government buildings, I can take it on airplanes, I can take it to stadiums, I can take it to concerts, theaters, and whatever. And people don't look at me weird because this isn't a knife, this isn't a gun, this isn't something that they would normally look at and say, mm, that's a dangerous weapon, but it is a dangerous, potentially dangerous implement if used effectively. And so you've got a little something, whereas otherwise you might have nothing at all. 
So I've established that I do like tactical pens, but is the Hinderer Investigator pen the best tactical pen you can get? Well, that kind of depends on what you need, what you want, and so forth from your tactical pen. Uh, if you want something that passes, again, as a tactical pen, I think it does a great job. It's nice and small. The aluminum version would be great for shirt pockets. Um, and like I said, it passes great, but it is very small. And so it's not as effective in the sort of defensive role, but there are so many varieties of it. It's very, very collectible. Uh, it is very small. We didn't give you that measurement. So let's give that to you real quick. It looks like it's just under four and a half inches altogether. So again, very small. Is it effective enough as a tactical pen or in that Coupaton way? I don't know, but I definitely like it given how cool looking it is and how collectible it is. Again, around 55 bucks for this version or 60 bucks now, I guess. And they go up to 80, I think on Blade HQ. And then you can spend even more than that on the Hinderer website on some very custom and very cool looking ones. That is if you like the idea of a tactical pen in the first place. And if you like the Hinderer investigator pen. I'm Blade Boy Scout. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.